first step is opening Job Maker. You'll hit File and add a style. This is where you import your DXF file. Contained in the DXF files, all the individual patterns, the orientations, the quantities, and the grading zones. If you hover over the individual pattern names, you can see the grading zones displayed to the right. Hit File and Save As and name the job. Click Save and then you can exit Job Maker. The next step is to open up Hide, Save, or Receive. This is where we import the highs and the highs and the flaws. It'll come up with a box for a new hide. Uh, in this particular module, you can enter in multiple hides for later nesting. Use your hide identifier number. This can be from a barcode or an individual number that you assign. We're just going to use one for the first hide to keep it simple. We click OK. The next box that comes up, you can enter details about the hide, uh, the leather type or name, the color, the hide area. This particular hide is 22 square feet. Put 22 square feet in there and then click on OK. Digitize the hide. Photos taken from the digital camera above and the outline is brought in. From here, we enter defect mode with the light pen. Click on the box. We start to enter the defects. The defect code is toggled through just by depressing the button. Use multiple pens at a time. This helps speed the uh, import process. You make a mistake, it's easy to erase the mistake simply by clicking on it and dragging it away. Once you've entered in all the flaws, hold the light pen over the box and exit defect mode. Click finish. And then on the computer screen, it'll ask you if you're ready to save the hide. If you are, you click yes. And then you enter in the next hide identifier again from a barcode number that's been pre-printed or from any other. We uh, put in the square footage with this hide. This one happens to be 24.5 square feet. Okay. Digitize, captures the outside of the hide, displays it on the screen for verification, and again we enter into defect mode using the light pen on the light box on the table. The lights will turn on so you can easily see defects. You can also turn them off by clicking upwards.
again if you make a mistake click on it drag away and that'll eliminate the defect Defects. Okay. Exit defect mode. Select finish. Again, you're asked if you'd like to save the hide. Click yes. You continue this process until all the hides for the job have been uh, input into the system. When you uh, put all the file or all the hides in. And then close out of uh, hide saver receive. Once you brought all the hides in, the next step is to open up QMaker. Once you're in QMaker, file open, find the uh, job that you had previously created from your DXF, open that up, and then bring in the hides. This marries the DXF designs to the individual hides. At this point, you need to know the hide number used. We use hide number one, we hit enter. Hide number two, also hit enter. And you keep on entering the hide numbers in, they're listed at the top, until you've had uh, all the hides for the job. When you're done, you hit done. It'll tell you that the queue was successfully saved. You click on file and hit exit. The next step is to, com to nest the two together. Uh, this will open up a dialog box and you can see the job name that we saved going to the first hide. You can configure it and select the maximum amount or minimum amount of time you want to nest. Uh, this setting will essentially try the rotation uh, of the hide for, in this case, 10 seconds. You can increase that up. Uh, the higher you make this, the more efficient your nesting will be and the greater your leather savings will be. We're going to use 10 seconds. 10 seconds for every rotation of the hide. Try that for both hides uh, and it will run for approximately two minutes this way. And you can see uh, it displays nesting hide one, then nesting hide two. If it hasn't placed all the parts, it continues to go back and forth, finding the most efficient means of nesting all the parts. When batch nester is complete, uh, idle will be displayed and you can then uh, close batch nester. At this point, you have uh, brought in your DXF, you scan the flaws, you scan the perimeters of the hides, you have a database of hides, uh, a nested design, and uh, now this is simulating the manual cutting operation. Uh, so at the manual cutting table, they go into hide saver cut, and hit file, open, open up the uh, nest, and enter the hide identifier. Again, this is either a barcode number or a unique identifier for the hide that's been assigned. Uh, we have two hides, so we can select either one or two. It doesn't matter. We chose number one. I'll go and get You proceed to keep on uh, cutting your hides manually, and eventually you'll get to the last hide for the job. Select the hide number from the system. You're warned that it's the last hide in the nested job. And typically at this point, you'll be left with a remnant due to the material savings. Lay the hide out flat on the table. Orient the hide. Get the uh, projection lined up with the hide and rotation and elevation.
click done. And then the remaining nested pieces will be displayed on the hide, around the flaws, obviously missing the flaws. In this case, we're left with a remnant. We can go then to the software and we can trace out this remnant and that portion of the hide will be saved in the database for future use on other jobs.